Hey everybody, welcome back to Austin Underground. I'm Nick Butler and I'm here with Joy Formidable. Hey guys. We lost day. our bass player. You watched We've your bass player? We've lost our bass player, yeah. Oh no. I know. You guys want to introduce yourselves for the, for the yeah, audience? Of course. Yeah. Well, you go first, Mr. Thomas. Hello, I'm Mr. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them what you do, uh, if you do uh, anything at all. Well, occasionally I hit drums and hope <laughs> that they're in tune and or I don't miss them. So, yeah. Perfect. Amazing. I'm Ritzy, uh, Joy for Middle as well. Do a bit of uh, singing. And, just a uh, bit. Just a bit. <laughs> and uh, play guitar. And we've lost our bass player. There's three of us usually, but yeah. it's all good. You got two out of three. That's perfect. That's the majority. That's, that's better. That's better than Side one. Project. <laughs> it's joy from Mirable, just without the bass. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I got a few questions for you tonight. Uh, I guess start off from the very beginning. Uh, how'd you guys meet? And how'd you guys know that you three were going to be it? You were the perfect trio for making a really full because you guys have a really full rock sound that a lot of bands just can't get with like seven players but you guys are able to just get it with three so how'd you guys meet and how'd you guys know that you guys were you guys were it that was the squad uh well rit and i went to school together so we've known each other since we were about three and a half really little and then we, but we didn't write in school. We were actually in competing school bands. Really? Yeah. Mine was better. <laughs> Way better. Just saying. That's what I heard. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then, um, <laughs> well, we were living in North Wales and we had a drummer that was in London and we were all, it's not that far in American terms, but we were going up and down the motorway to each other. And then we started touring and it just didn't work out. But we stayed in, ended up staying in London, and then we met Mr. Thomas, who was living in in London at the time. Was and it? we had we yeah, had it like was, yeah. it was a very 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 quick. Let's just say that we kind of got together, had one rehearsal, and we went on tour. We were like in Maida Vale the following week. It was wow. like you know it had to kind of gel and work, or it would have been pretty crappy to be honest. Um, yeah. And yeah, it just, it's just been, it was very busy right from the start, wasn't it? It's been non-stop. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's when you, you kind of know whether or not the chemistry is going to work. I think if you get thrown into something yeah. at that kind of level of intensity, it's like, this is either going to sound really good and you're going to kind of, you know, fast track to a place that you need to be really quickly or not. And I think we did all right, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we're ten years ago. Ten years and uh, what is it? Three months. Yeah. Ten years and three months. Happy anniversary. Uh, You're late by three months. Oh, sorry. Get out. (laughs) It's belated. It's okay. Band's over. I forgot. I didn't buy flowers. Oh no. I don't want it. So bad. <laughs> Nobody buys guys flowers, do they? That's, I do. We were talking about that the other day. I all the time do. What do. How come I've never got any flowers? Well, I don't buy my bandmates flowers because you both suck. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we've never bought you flowers. No, uh, that's no or anything really. So, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we suck. <laughs> um, you've heard it here first. I <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. I'm gonna move on to the next question. Uh, okay. If you, if I insist. Uh, uh, so you guys just released your brand new album, Arth. Am I pronouncing it right, or is it more A's? Or you can put more A's in if you want. Mm. If you're feeling in, it depends on what your mood is. If you're feeling like you need to let go of some things, you have to do it like straight from the stomach. Or do you want to like give me an example? He's pretty good at doing various well, versions of it. Yeah, there's a couple of ways you can do it, isn't there? You can be like. Arth, like that, or you could be Arth, like that, a little bit more purry, like, or you can Arth. be like, yeah, exactly. That's the sad version, you know. That's the, uh, that's the reprise. Yeah. <laughs> I, those are all better than how I just pronounced it. So you know, you know, that's great. Okay, so you guys just released your new album, and can you sort of run me through the creative process of how it came to be, the whole recording? <sighs> It's hard to know when to start. I just know that we kind of went into the studio on a little bit of a, with mixed feelings. For us, making music has always been like a really like positive thing. We've always really loved getting together and creating. And I think at the start of this record, we were feeling a little bit, there was so much going on that was quite hard to take on board that we were almost like, do we, 
is this going to make it better or is this going to be tough on us and should we just have a little breather and get ourselves back kind of like you know together and we thought fuck it we'll go into the studio <laughs> for a couple of weeks and if it, if it ends up like feeling right and good then we'll you know we'll create something yeah. and it just did in fact it ended up being even more kind of like fluid and playful and it almost felt like a contrast to maybe where we were actually at at the time so I kind of see it as a very transformative record it's kind of like it could have gone any old way couldn't it it's just a very very strange like period for the little chapter in the band but you know you kind of have to we're pretty tenacious you kind of brush it off and you either kind of keep on creating something that you really fucking feel or sometimes you just need to step away for a little bit and we didn't we made an album and, you know you made a, a great album there you go yeah yeah thomas do you have anything you want to add are you all right <laughs> yeah i'm just like mm, yes yes i agree <laughs> <laughs> He agrees to anything right. he is getting his head rubbed. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah definitely. I oh, love a good head rub. <laughs> uh, my next question is, uh, do you have a personal favorite off this new album? Uh, oh, it, it changes a lot. I mean, like, there's, there's little... I kind of like the book end of the album. Like, you know, it starts with a Blianera, which is obviously like a, one of our Welsh language songs. And it almost like the sister track to that is Caught on a Breeze that the album ends with. I, I don't know. I kind of keep going back to those from, from a live, from the live side. They kind of feel like very alive and um, got a lot of, you know, kind of the, the lyrics behind them and where they come from. Me, me recognizing what actually you know um influence those those tracks i'd say probably those two you've got a favorite haven't you i i like wrong side yeah. i like playing wrong side live because there's a bit of crazy shit going on in the background people might not notice Just like it's got some really nice little drum subtleties yeah, hasn't exactly. it some crazy drum secrets that's going on during wrong side <laughs> yeah that's it you know gotta yeah. do the crazy shit <laughs> that's that's awesome uh over your whole uh, period of being a band, has there been one song that you just love performing live that you can really just get into and just start jamming on on, on set? Um, I, I still feel sometimes as moved and emotional by like The Greatest Light is the Greatest Shade as I do the very first time we wrote it or played it live. It's bizarre, you know, how like, and it takes on different, sometimes it's like emotional, it's like quite emotively angry or you know other times it's kind of like you feel kind of quite celebratory with it it seems to just kind of like you know even though the mood behind it changes it still feels very very new to me every time we play it which is kind of great you know after 10 years you know yeah. what about it's like you? a chameleon of a song isn't it really it? is yeah i think it is yeah it's like that's the, perfect the cuttlefish of uh... the cuttlefish of our repertoire <laughs> Yes. <laughs> do, you have, do you have one? Do you have a favorite besides the cuttlefish? Do you have a favorite you love performing? Uh, well, wrong side is great. Pass it by because I get to smash out a few drum soloy type bits. I guess not that it's all about me, but you know, <laughs> it, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Um, my next question is. Uh, if there's one band, one artist that you could uh, cooperate with on a song, that you could write a song with, uh, for one song, who would it be and why? Oi. Oh, man. It would, I mean, it would probably be Robert Smith from The Cure, to be honest. You know, like, um, we've, we've had a really strange year. Um, the Cure, probably one of my all-time favorite bands. And, we, you know, we've just done two shows that are kind of uh, cure connected we did um meltdown that robert um curated and then we're going to go and do this fucking festival in august in glasgow with the cure headlining uh it's got uh mogwai, mogwai <laughs> twilight sad and us all at this festival and um yeah i would absolutely love to do something with him but maybe it's best to not do something with somebody you love and you admire, you know. Maybe, maybe. maybe just, you know, I don't know. 
he seems like a really lovely lovely person as well and he's obviously an amazing songwriter and there's so much f feeling in what he he puts out so yeah if it was the collaborations are always weird I think they've got to be just very natural so if it felt really natural then yeah that would be the, that would be a lovely moment yeah that that would be good you like the cure your reaction oh. you were like I, I've, I've seen them live before. They're amazing. They're yeah, one of my favorite me. bands. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. I'm actually going to see them this summer in uh, in Denmark. Yeah, oh, it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be awesome. Brilliant. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So is there anybody you'd like to collaborate with? Well, unfortunately, Frank Zappa's dead, so uh, oh, that, that's not happening. Yeah, so. you never know. <laughs> I mean, the technology they have these days. That's true. I, mean, I could you know. collaborate with the hologram of uh, oh, Frank yeah. Zappa. I don't like holograms. Yeah. Right? Sometime in the future. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Or if time travel eventually gets invented, you know, someone could come forward, grab me from... Oh, no, go back, grab me from the past, then take me even further back. We could collaborate with Frank Zappa and then come to the future when there's, like, I don't know... We'd be a, better a pressing more. the record in the past because it'd be cheaper and yeah. there's more pressing plants. Oh, so we yeah. just have to make sure we press the vinyl back yeah. then. But, oh, but then we've got to bring them we need back. To collab, we need to collab in the future, right? Oh. So the recording techniques oh. are even better. Oh. Pristine okay, audio. Exactly. Yeah. And then we can go back, like press this. the records, and then, I don't know, maybe leave them there, but then only release them... 500 years Should later. We sell them in the future? That's what or I'm the saying. Or the past? Yeah, sell them in the future because the uh, the uh, interest rates will have gone up by then, you see. So, uh, Got it all sorted. So, exactly. It's like you had this plan. You knew beforehand what I was going to say. That's exactly it. I knew you were into uh, the economics of past and future, and that's why I brought it up, you know. You know. Yeah, I'm actually a time, sp time travel specialist, so, you know, there you go. I could tell. <laughs> you could tell, yeah. It was the book it had, you know. Oh, it came back from the past. Yeah, give away. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, my last question. Oh, I actually have a couple questions, What's sorry. What a smell that smells like donuts. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, where are you going to go with that? <laughs> <laughs> sewer, sewage that and donuts? Well, I'm leaving one. I, I gotta go. Anyway, I can't handle these many questions. <laughs> uh, I, I have a fan question for you guys, actually. Actually, it comes from my dad, who's one of your biggest fans ever, and he wants to know if you can come to Austin for his birthday in September. <laughs> well, Dad, that's kind of a big ask. I, I mean, like... That's what uh, I said. It's very sweet. Uh, what's the date in September? September 10th. Wow, you know your dad's birthday. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Uh, September 10th. I don't think we've got any of anything on the book, so you never know. We we could. Is there going to be cake? We can make multiple cakes. Well, if there's cake, ma is there anything else? Cake? Yeah, we're there. We'll we're probably there. do it. Just yeah. cake? All right. Yeah. It's going to be a birthday yeah, party. Greedy. You know, just one cake. We don't you need one, one cake. Yeah. One cake. It'll be a good cake, though. Future cake. <laughs> cake from the future. What flavor is future cake? What's in a future cake? <laughs> Please explain. <laughs> I don't know. It's the, it just tastes of future. Well, I think we've kind of, we've kind of avocados have been big. Oh. And uh, what else has been kind of cauliflower has been oh, kind of what's maybe next? there's maybe there's going to be like some sort of cabbage cake that. Well, you know, the ca kale's been big as well. The kale's so a bit. That'll be over in the future. Ava it'll be avocado, won't it? They'll have crossbred it. Avocado cake. And some pumpkin spice as well. Latte pumpkin in there. Pumpkin spice will be over in the future. Yeah, but not the avocado pumpkin spice latte flavoured <laughs> cake. That's new. That's future cake right there. I have to tell you, this sounds disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't knock that's it you That sounds it. so <laughs> gross. <laughs> And it'll just be a hologram of a cake instead of a real fucking cake. Yeah, that way you can't gain weight, you can yeah. eat as much as you so want. So everybody will be so worried about getting fat, they'll be like, it's a pretend cake that you pretend to eat and it doesn't really give you any calories. You can still taste it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, a VR you know. cake. Th there it is, there we've go. solved it. You solved it, absolutely. All right, my... <laughs> shit. <laughs> AR cake. <laughs> it sounds terrible. Okay, let's look a little bit into the near future, though. I have to ask you guys, my last question, where do you guys see yourself in 10 years? What's the plan? Wow. Well, we probably got asked this 10 years ago, and I said, all I want is that I want to still be loving making music and for us to still be tight as friends. 
like for us to still feel like a band that loves to kind of create together. So to be honest, I'm happy just to roll that forward another 10 years. If we're still feeling like really inspired by each other and we're still like going on tour, you know, we, we go on tour and it still feels like, like the best day ever, you know? I think as long as none of those things change, then I'm happy with 10 years in the future. That and future cake. No. <laughs> no. My, su- like my sunglasses couldn't take it. Glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Cool. And see ya. <laughs> and see ya. You're right. You want me to hold that while you okay. get here? Yeah. Yeah. Hello and uh, <laughs> welcome to Joy Formidable TV. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for coming for this interview. I really appreciate it. You guys are an amazing band. I love seeing you guys perform. Thank uh, you so much. Have a lovely time with yeah. the Bye. Yeah, you what too. What are you doing? What are you going to do? You're going to be interviewing more bands, yeah. yeah. Don't do that, it's boring. What else do you want to do? <laughs> this, is the, this is the most fun part for me, absolutely. Uh, I don't believe it. Some bands Meeting are Meeting amazing people, like, oh, come on. <laughs> well, okay. <thank> you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so. Instead of having a load of charismatic bands that you get to interview, mm. instead of duddeads. Yeah, here's Yay. the that. <laughs> well, um, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to follow Austin Underground at ATX Underground on Instagram and Twitter. You guys want to plug yourselves? Uh, Social a, a plug. Yeah. Uh, to know uh, what are we at? Joy formidable something. Uh, uh, <laughs> what for Instagram? Yeah. Oh, at Joy formidable is Instagram. There we go. And then Facebook. <laughs> You'll find us. Well, you, you know the internet. You've been on the internet, all right? Jeez. There's no pretend groups or anything. <laughs> I don't think. So There's maybe. a fake Joy formidable somewhere. You know. Maybe. It's me, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're gonna find him. We're gonna get him. That fake joy for minimal. I'm running. <laughs> Stealing our gigs. Right, coming for you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.